What a monster. It's an Alvarez Yagiri. Now this in particular is a DYMR 70 SP. This is a 12 fret dreadnought. This is a handmade guitar in Japan and this is the unrivaled king of Asian made guitars. There is no brand that is more precise and more articulate and more nuanced and, and keenly aware of details than Alvarez Yagiri. Now I'm probably saying it differently than I would have said it six months ago. And I'm saying it probably different than most people, but the people that I know that know the family directly, they call it Yagiri. And so this is a brand that I've known about for a long time. And um, I'm very, very excited that I get to spend more time with these. This guitar belongs to my friend, Chris. Uh, he owns Blue Sprocket and Hometown Music. And he is a dear friend of mine. And this is his personal guitar. Now this was a guitar that he bought to replace place a guitar that had been destroyed when his studio caught on fire as a result of a gas explosion next door in the building that also home that also housed hometown music and so this was a bit of retail therapy uh chris has said everything was gone um in his life and in, in his vocational life from the studio and the record stuff that he did and so when it came time for him to buy a new guitar this was the one he bought and the reason he bought this is the reason that i would have bought this it is absolutely immaculate and wonderful. Yayiri guitars got their start in the 1960s, and in my lifetime, the most popular I've ever seen them was with bands that I wasn't necessarily into. Bands like Stained, and what's that other dude? The dude, Aaron, whatever his name is, um, that... Anyway, I'll put his stuff down in the description down below and a picture of him right here. But uh, they were guitars that I started seeing in the early 2000s that were incredibly well built, but... They played a genre of music that I wasn't into. Anyway, I missed out. I was a music snob and it cost me knowing more about Alvarez Yayuri guitars sooner. But Yayuri guitars got their start in the 1960s. They have been a handmade guitar for a long time. And I think that the biggest favor that they bring to guitar culture is a lesson that you and I need to learn as well. I've said this before, but I, as I was thinking about this brand over the last couple days with this guitar, it's a bad idea to imitate others. And it's a great idea to interpret other people's passions through your skills. I know for me, artists that I love, if I try and sing in the same key as them, if I try to just straight imitate, copy them, I'm a bad cover band and most cover bands are terrible because people are people and they're not other people. And so when you stack up your strengths against a professional musician's strengths, you versus Dolly Parton, Dolly did it better. You versus uh, Stephen Stills, Stephen Stills did it better. But the coolest space is like, I think Ryan Adams does this best. He can listen to someone's record and then interpret it into his own style. So. 
interpret, don't uh, imitate. And so I, I've said this many, many times, but I think you're much better suited bringing something into your strengths, bringing the thing that you love about that song and moving it into a place that you will hit a freaking home run. And so when I think of Alvarez Yagiri, I really, I've spent a lot of time with this guitar over the last two months, and I've spent a good amount of time with other Alvarez Yairis, and the thing I keep finding over and over again, there are two things that always strike me about this guitar and their guitars in general. They absolutely do some traditional things, but then they also really interpret it into Japanese carpentry, into their culture, into how these guitars would articulate and produce music out of them. So this guitar, let's dig into some of the details and I want to talk about how that stuff, some of the interpretive stuff is incredibly helpful. This, I mean, a 12 fret dreadnought with a slot headstock, I mean, that's straight up Martin from the 1930s, but no one in there, no one, not a single chance would someone see this guitar and think that this is a guitar based on the 1930s. They're going to look at this guitar and they're going to see some really cool things. Now, the number one thing that they would absolutely see first is this ebony inset on the top and this bridge and just how this bridge is simply unlike any other guitar brand any other guitar brand or any other bridge that you've seen there's a piece of ebony on the top of the fingerboard and then there's a completely separate uh, and reset uh, piece of ebony and look that's the first time I can see the grain of it it is unbelievably wonderful now the thing is they tell us that this guitar is hand built that it is not a CNC that cuts this joint around the neck and this bridge plate. And so my understanding, well, one, that's an incredible amount of craftsmanship. I built a guitar a while ago and I sanded through the side and there were a million little mistakes I made and just getting things to line up, that is an incredible level of craftsmanship and just very specific attention to detail. The way I visualize this is that you have this really dense piece of ebony uh, into the top of the guitar that transfers the most energy. Now, the other thing that really is shocking is how much break angle you get and how much energy transfer goes into the top when you have just, I mean, that steep of a ramp going into the top. So this guitar, while it pulls a couple cues that are very old looking, like the slot headstock and the 12 fret and the sunburst, it is absolutely cutting edge and it's just like i said all of the stuff is being interpreted into the best guitars with the best wisdom and reflection and introspection into how these guitars are made now on the back and sides is an incredibly beautiful piece of east indian rosewood two pieces four pieces technically if you count the sides and uh, so this guitar um it continues to have some traditional things it feels like a really thoughtful, modern, articulate guitar. The closest comparison I can have to these is to Ferk. I think that Ferk, when I went to see them last summer, it was a life-changing experience because I saw how incredible guitars can be made through meticulous precision. And um, both of these guitar brands come out of being a very precise guitar without ever feeling sterile. Neither of these ever feel like they're just machine made. There are brands that to me, they're just, you know, they're fine. Taylor, I feel that way about Taylor guitars. They're very precise, but they're sterile. They're not that exciting to me. these are still under $3,000. Now, Alvarez Yairi is starting to do some really incredible things that I'm excited to show off to you. And we're going to start showing them more on the hometown page um, is that they have some really exceptional old growth Honduran mahogany. So we have went ahead and ordered an OM and a Dreadnought in both their bluegrass versions and then the other Dreadnought version, the OM version. We've toyed with the idea of getting a mahogany top, but I think we'll hold off on that for now. But we want to do... Um, uh, we want to show off the Alvarez Yairi series because they have the Honduran Masterwork series, then they have the Masterwork series, and then they move down into other series that are more affordable. And all in, all of them, when you stack them up against their uh, European or American counterparts, 
are exceptionally great value. So anyway, this is an Alvarez Yagiri. Thank you to Chris for letting me borrow this guitar. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. Uh, go check out uh, alvarezguitar.com. If you're curious about Alvarez or Yagiri, you can also check out Hometown Music. That's the shop that I work at full time during the week. And um, what, uh, what incredible guitars. I think all of us are much better suited to interpret into our style rather than just imitating. You stacked up to your hero, they're gonna blow you away. But you being inspired because you're made of the same stuff. You're made to create and to make. And so you creating, you making, that's what the world needs. So go fill the world with music and friendship. I'm Jeremy, I'll see you later, bye. And now I can't hear it.